and uh, welcome to today's podcast. We are super excited to welcome you to our first ever video podcast on the Village Catholic Conversations. This is where we gather, we share conversations and stories in, through our gospel. We read the gospel, we read the scriptures, and we invite thoughts from my friend Art, myself, to inspire us to continue to be with Jesus, to develop the relationship with Jesus, to get excited about what we, we do. And my friend Art, um, I love w w when you told me last time that when I said, when you asked me how are you doing, and I said, I'm doing better than good and better than most. There's something that you said, and I'm forgetting, I would like you to remind me. Um, was it was it the too blessed to be stressed? That yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Too, I thought I was gonna get you. Too but. too blessed to be stressed. Yes, yeah. too blessed to be stressed. Stress, and uh, that's what well inspired us to do this uh, podcast. So welcome, welcome, and my friend, uh, welcome. Uh, say hi it's to good, the listeners. It's good to see you again, and it's yeah. uh, it's awesome to be back on the air, so to speak, digital air, <laughs> digital, <laughs> and yeah. now people get to see us. Ramble. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Look at so, that. Yeah. Anyway. So, hey, let's get it rolling. Why don't you start us with some prayer and then I'll, uh, I'll read the gospel for today. Yes. I, I hope you can see me well and I hope I'm not moving too much on my face looking at the camera and looking at you and you're good. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. It's all good. Let's so make it <laughs> all <right>. happen. <laughs> the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, we thank you, Almighty God, for this moment. Thank you for allowing us to come here and share your word through this video and digital media. How wonderful it is to be with you and to send everything that we do. Help us to share. Let your Holy Spirit come and guide us as we share this. And then we ask in the intercession of our Mother Mary, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you. Blessed Amen. 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 Blessed is the Lord Jesus. Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, sinners, now and at Amen. the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. My Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Awesome. Yes. Okay. So you are reading the gospel today. And then yes. We'll so today um, we're still in the, in the gospel of Mark uh, in the reading cycle um, as we approach Lent uh, very shortly. I um, mean, this is from um, Mark uh, chapter 9, verse 30 to 37. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the son of man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the son of man will rise. But they did not understand the saying and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum and once inside the house, he began to ask them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. For they had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wish to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, wow. John, there we are. Yeah. I think, I think many of our listeners probably are familiar with this story. Um, what's, your, what's your first initial thoughts on this? <clears throat> when I hear this, the first thing that comes to my mind is humility. Being humble. Although sometimes you may argue that, you know, sometimes when you have little children like my own, who is a four-year-old and two-year-old, <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, running all over the place, uh, you know, what Jesus was talking, you know, about here, and uh, sometimes they are running all over and you're trying to keep up with them. Um, but I think for me, it's that humility of being able to serve, you know, being able to uh, receive those we think, uh, you know, still growing they don't have um, so much as we have as adults 
so to speak, taking care of um, the children and everyone else we meet on the way. Can it be humble in your service? I think that's what sticks in my mind. Right, right. Well, and I think too, um, um, the whole idea of uh, accepting the faith like a child, I think that's different than being childish. You, you, you know, so as, as a parent, um, yes. as a parent who raised two children, uh, and I was, kind of, John, I was a stay-at-home dad. I don't remember if I told you this before, but like, uh, and I think I have talked in, in a little bit about my story, but I was home with my, you know, two-year-old daughter. Um, mm -hmm. And let me tell you what, you probably know this, two-year-olds <laughs> are pretty selfish little creatures. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm one of my own. Yeah. Right, right. Um, and, and even six-year-olds and eight-year-olds oftentimes can be very selfish yeah. and lacking in humility. They've yet to develop that at times in the sense that I want this thing and I want it now. Um, you know, um, not to embarrass either of my children, but I can recall both of them at times, like literally on the floor, just having a fit because mm. they didn't get their way. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, um, uh, but I think what Jesus is saying He's not saying we should be childish, but childlike. And as a father about to be a new father again, oh, yes, experience yes, this, yes. Like, like, you know, when your child crawls up in your lap and just looks into mm. your eye yes. and you know that that child thinks you are everything. And in, in essence, John, as a father, you are everything. You, that child and we've had this discussion before too, when my kids get all, when they were little, they would get all uppity, right? And they're like, if I was a grown up and I'm, a, you know, like, yeah, well, it's my house and my food and my water. Yes. Your and rules. It's my rules, right, right. Um, but um, so in essence, you're, you're, but when they're, when those little, when they're, especially yeah. small children, they yeah. might be childish and at times self-centered, but when they look at you as, as their father, they, you are everything to them. And I think that's what Jesus is saying. Your child, in essence, is the least in the family. They, they don't do anything but make dirty diapers and eat your food and yeah. <laughs> cause lack of sleep, right? But, but, um, but they, they accept you as the provider of the family yeah. Yeah. With, without any hesitation. And I think that's what Jesus is saying. Yeah. You want to be the greatest you have to look at my, you have to look at the father like that, right? Crawl up on the heavenly father's mm -hmm. lap and just, and just appreciate that everything you have has come from him. Yeah. You know, when you're speaking as well, I was thinking about, you know, this question that they got in the house and Jesus began by asking them question. What were you working about on the way? Right. That, that kind of leads me to, um, uh, what we as human beings um, are sort of traditionally, we are not equipped to ask questions, but I think it, it makes me think that there's power in listening, there's power in asking a question and in listening before sharing everything else of what you know, you want to dig deeper, you want to help people understand. So Jesus, even though he knew, what they were talking about, he still wanted to right. give them an opportunity yeah. to speak their mind. Yeah. Um, and, and it comes to me that for two people to have a conversation, for two people to walk together, for two people to, or even a multitude of people, that having a conversation, it's being humble to listen, being humble to answer the question. Even though here we are told in the Bible that, when Jesus asked this question, they remained silent. <laughs> well, because they were embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> they remained silent. I mean, what, what do you think about that? Well, well <laughs> what I think is, it's like, I think most of the time we know when we're not doing the right thing, right? First of all, we, we, we absolutely know it. Um, you know, um, no, what, what, I, what I see here, though, is, um, first of all, I mean, it's such a human thing to want to be looked at as the favorite child. Or yeah. um, have your kids ever asked you that? They're maybe not old enough yet. Which yeah, one's the favorite, you know? Yeah, they, they, uh, but, they haven't uh, asked me that, yeah. Uh, but, uh, 
But I think for, for when I look at this, I also think is Jesus is inviting us to have a relationship because the conversations that we have, every conversation, even a casual one, uh, I was talking to a young lady who made a milkshake for me a few minutes mm -hmm. ago on my way in. Not for me. I was getting it for a friend of mine who oh. jokingly <laughs> said, you, as I was headed back to the building, could you stop and get me a, a strawberry milkshake? And she was joking and I did. Oh. So, but, but I had a, a small conversation with this woman. That little conversation required at least a small relationship. Yes. A human contact. But on a larger scale, John, I, I think God is not this distant God. God is in the form of Jesus, second person of the Trinity, with his own friends, was inviting a relationship. Even though he knew, you know, he knew, he knew what they were thinking, he was mm -hmm. inviting them to speak to him and reach out to an invitation to prayer. I look at yeah, this and it's an invitation good, yeah, that's to a very prayer, good, right? Yeah, 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 it's an invitation to prayer. It's, a, it's an invitation to walk with him because as we know, he's about to go through the passion um, right. and uh, it's just amazing uh, and then <laughs> this is something that I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about and it is something that I want to do following the footsteps of my grandfather my grandfather was a person of very deep faith very strong faith and sometimes when I read some of Jesus teaching and I picture Jesus sitting down with the 12 in a circle and having like a deep conversation, impactful conversation about the kingdom of God and give, giving teachings. And my grandfather was the same um, because he would have, uh, during the evening, he would have a fireplace and people would just come and sit around the fire and just have great, great impactful conversations. Sometimes during the day when it is so hot and sunny, we would sit under a sycamore tree, especially when we visited him. And he would just have you know, biblical teachings, uh, life skills teachings, and everything. And I think, as you said, invitation to prayer, also invitation to have, you know, conversations that can be transformative, especially stories about our faith, right. stories about what is God doing in your life? What have you experienced in the past that inspires you to keep worshiping, praising, glorifying, thanking him. And what can you inspire other people to follow the same lead? Because let's face it, faith is meant to be shared. You know, right. you're given that gift so that you can gift it to as many people as possible, which is what you call evangelizing or making of discipleship. Right. And what a good way to do that. You know, like inviting people a group of people, one or many, and just having a conversation like Jesus did, reading the scriptures, um, sharing personal stories. And I think I'm praying that God will help us so that you and I can actually get together and make it happen. Right. <laughs> Other than uh, the, the virtual, we can have, you know, uh, a participative uh, way of evangelizing through. Um, you know, conversations through um, sharing of our stories and, and, and kind of spreading the word of God that way. So that's how, something else that I, I picture here when the Bible says, then he sat down, called the 12 and said to them. So I, I picture him saying, let's gather. That's the first invitation. Let's go gather so that we can have a dialogue so that I can give you a teaching. Right. I like that a lot, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and I and I and I think um, we're we're so unafraid, and I know it's it's minor things, but um, I mean we can we can hold these massive conversations about the Eagles and the, the oh, yes. Super Bowl and all these you know get ourselves all worked up about this team or that team or or uh, you know stuff that the the lady at the grocery store that cut you off on the way out and all these things. Huh. And we're, we don't hesitate to share all of that, for lack of a word, like negativity. But when we come home, do we share, you know, the time in which you had a conversation with a, a peer at work about how you maybe consoled them, they were having a bad day, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe their grandmother's sick or there's some kind of illness in the family or whatever. 
um, we're so quick to like, oh, you never believe what happened. I was pulling out of the store and, and this person just like didn't even yeah. see me and cut me off. Well, they yeah. woke up that morning looking for someone to annoy. It's obviously it was you, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and, but we don't say, you know, we don't find the good parts of our day to tell those stories. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And the invitation to, I think if we, <coughs> excuse me, John, if, if we have a hard time having conversations with each other, I think it becomes even harder to have a conversation with our Lord who's not here in our presence. Yes, that's very true. Right? And, and I that's think God puts us, I think we're, we live in community for a reason because it's practice you know, learning, learning to have these relationships with each other, especially in the house with a, you know, with a family, you, you learn to interact and hopefully yeah. that leads to conversation. And then personal time, like just spending time in adoration, going to chapel where you're in the presence of God and not just sitting in your room, nothing wrong with praying in your room, but to be present to yeah. the father. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So good stuff, right? Yeah, this is good stuff. And uh, what do you think is the, the best invitation or the best um, course of action for our listeners, for ourselves to do as we go forth on, based on this gospel? You know, and I would say from this, especially a week away from Lent, is I would challenge our listeners and those who are watching us today um, to, to, to take this gospel and make a concerted effort to work on your relationship with, with God and and like a child, just go, go to, go to church, go sit in church. Your parishes may have special times of adoration or other things, or just stop by five minutes. That's mm. all you need. You know, as well as I do, John, five minutes with your kids just makes your whole day good, right? Yes. yes. You had a rough day, five minutes, your little kid smiling at you, beaming yeah, at you, daddy, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, um, running up, yeah. So, so for our listeners, I would say, I I'm going to challenge them and, and us too is yep. to however much time you're spending in relationship and conversation with Jesus, take it to the next level. Just add five more minutes a day. You know, throughout the day, just have those conversations in your heart with, with Jesus and listen to what he has to say. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because guess what? He didn't get mad at them that they were having. Do you know, it's the other thing too. Yeah. I just no, realized I, he yes. didn't say, you bad apostles. <laughs> I've been teaching yeah. you all this time, right? Yes. And yes. here you're still arguing about who's the greatest. Mm -hmm. He just said, oh, Ma, now listen, let me show yeah. you. Yeah. So he was compassionate and understanding that that aspect of human nature is something we, that's part of us. So I'm, I'm trying to think if it's, if he, if we were at present time, the, you and I were there, he would have said, hey, you are, can you stop, stop arguing? <laughs> you would have right, caught right, people right, right. <laughs> how many more times am i going to tell you this right 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 so good That's stuff, good stuff. Yeah. well john it's been a great it's been a great uh, this is a great first episode i think oh i know uh, this you is... know podcast i like it so much better than the audio um uh i think i think it's going to be an awesome thing for for both us and hopefully share some of our our, our thoughts and practical ideas for uh yeah. for life living the gospel of, of love so let's pray us out uh uh, you, you ready? Can I, can yes. I take a shot at this? Awesome. Yeah, you, you are the blessing us, yes. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we have proclaimed your word and we have taken it into our hearts. We ask you today to make the truth of this gospel living to us, place in our hearts and our minds actions that we can take to more completely learn to love you and those around us and our families and our friends and all that we meet. We thank you for all the graces that you have given to us to this date and all the graces that it will be available to us. And we pray as we approach the time, the sacred time of Lent, that we would make good use of all of the opportunities to develop a deeper relationship with you, Jesus, and ultimately with the Father. In your name, Jesus, through the intercession of Mary, we pray, amen. In the name of the Father, amen. Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you so much, brother. Make it All a right. great time to do. All right, ready? Here we go. We're going out. See you, John. See ya. Thank you.